Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you are new here, thanks for tuning in and hopefully you'll stop back for future videos. Uh, today we are going to work on Spaghetti Monster, otherwise known as an OBD2 VR6 harness. You may wonder, why are you even bothering with this? So, I don't know if it was mentioned, I have a spare VR6 swap uh, sitting in my shed, my other garage, whatever. Obviously, I don't need the harness for this guy, but I do I do want to use this harness, and it's got some trouble spots on it. It's kind of ugly. Um, it has rodent damage. So what I thought we would do is we're going to start peeling back the tape, and I'm going to show you guys most of what you can get rid of, and the, what I think is the way to get rid of these harnesses, extra junk, get them cleaned up and looking good. And we probably won't wrap it in this video, but we'll at least thin out what we can, like secondary air injection, air conditioning stuff, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to work on today. Let's talk about first steps. Um, let's assume that you're swapping a car that's CE2 and you want to just plug this in and turn a key and go. So what we want to do is we're going to want to think carefully about this actually. Uh, I've done this a few times, so I think about it a lot less than most people would just because more or less I know what I'm doing or I have an expectation of what needs to be done. So, first thing you're going to want to do is take your spaghetti monster and lay it out in a way that makes sense. So, let me just make sure you can see all this. Right, great. So we have the ECU over here. That's cool. And then as it sits in a Mark III, the ECU's like this. And the boot's over here, and then this goes down to your oxygen sensors, your mass airflow sensor, and the EVAP purge valve. This, whoop, come here buddy, this is your ambient air temp sensor. We're missing something here. Ah yes, we are. We're missing two things. That aside, we have some other crap here. So, you're going to have wiper plug ambient temp sensor that goes up under the rain tray and then this should be for the alarm horn if I'm not mistaken. Um, that we're not really going to worry about too much. Then we have our brake switch which you can tell this was in a Mark II and it was leaking but it was modified. Solenoid for your uh, recirculation flap which is vacuum controlled in a Mark III and of course the coolant bottle which looks like it had corrosion on one of the pins also. So that's cool. Uh, fan control module, that's still here, so that's no big deal. And we also have, let's see here, what is this? That's a reverse light switch, that was done terribly. Uh, but that's okay, not a big deal. Uh, we can fix that. Then we have our positive wires. And this, I believe, is going to be the secondary air injection pump, uh, relay, and fuse. And this, we're, we're going to throw this entire bit out, so that's awesome. This, this will leave. Um, which will leave us with probably just two. I think this is for that, and that should go away. We'll see. I want to say that this wire ends up right here. We'll get to that when we get to it. Other than that, we have crank sensor, knock sensor, coolant temperature sensor. That's probably for the alternator exciter lead. Yep, it's a blue, blue insulation. I don't think you'll be able to see it, but that goes to the, um, to the alternator. And then this should be the extension lead for the air conditioning. This goes to the starter. And these will also be leaving because this is the secondary air injection solenoid and the secondary air injection pump plug, which goes to this relay. So once we unwrap all of this crap and get this tape out of the way, it'll make a lot more sense how we can get rid of it. And the main reason I, I'm bothering is because I have all these damaged wires. So what I thought would be wise is, before I fix any of these wires, what I'd rather do is figure out what I don't need and destroy it and get rid of what I don't need. And hopefully some of the things I don't need will be these wires. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and unwrap everything real quick here and that will just do super duper fast. And when I return, we're gonna get rid of the secondary air, get rid of the air conditioning stuff. And that should be about it. Realistically, there's not a lot on these that you don't need. AC components can leave because we're not going to put AC back in this car. Not that I'm going to tell you what it is yet, but yeah, I'll tell you one thing about the project that we haven't bought yet. 
And before you say, don't you have another project? Yeah, I do. Don't worry about it. What I bought, and this will help you figure out what it is, in no way at all. It's blue. All right, let's unwrap some wires real quick. Something to note here. This is an ambient temperature sensor for the gauge cluster. That's the outside temperature, and that sensor right here feeds it. So the sensor for temperature for air conditioning that we're going to remove is actually the white plug up by the, um, the white. And that makes sense because it's got the green wire, so that should be for the air conditioning. So this will get removed later. Um, yeah, let's keep on. So now we got to get the rest of this trimmed back and if you're going to do this use a super sharp razor because it cuts through the tape good and then you won't risk running through your wire. So after unwrapping half of the harness, let's recap where we're at first. So there's our pile of stuff removed thus far. We have the temp sensor for ambient temp and we have this random plug that doesn't go to anything, at least on the reference car it doesn't and the SAI stuff is gone. Uh, what we're gonna pull out today will be this stuff. It's gonna be the jumper leads that go to the AC compressor, because again, we're not gonna have AC on this harness, I don't care. And this is the fan doohickey plug, the temp sensor for the air conditioning. I was concerned this was for the engine management, but then I remembered, and I looked over here, and there's two other sensors, the yellow sensor, is what runs the gauge and one of the fan speeds I believe or the after run fan and the blue plug in the middle here is the one that is actually for the engine coolant temperature for the ECU so we're good to take that out we're good to take that two pin out uh, let's see here I think that's about all we need to pull out of this um, other than the wires over here and I want to say I'm fairly sure that the unidentified, um, the unidentified leads over here, not these four, this is the AC pressure switch, but these three, I think that's for a leak detection pump. So I'm going to check the wire colors against the Bentley here and confirm that and then we're going to throw all that out.
Here's what we got left after we did some thinning and some repairs. Now there are still a couple rogue wires that I'm gonna have to take care of, i.e. these three here. And there's a couple connections here that aren't really in the best of shape. So we'll deal with those. Um, we'll deal with those later. But for the time being, this harness is good to go with the exception of one black wire that I need to cut in half and splice back together because it's, com it's compromised. But in effect, everything else is good to go so we can start basically cleaning it up. And what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to take off the... Let me get rid of that little switch guy also. Dude, this rooster is so annoying. And we're going to get rid of the rest of the conduit and the tape because I'm going to test the tape this whole thing. And we'll come back to doing all that when the time comes and making it look pretty. But all things considered, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. This is the pile of crap that came off of it, which is um, a lot and we're not done yet. And then, of course, the wire that was removed. So thankfully, we had a Mark III VR the source of this harness as a reference point to get rid of some stuff we didn't need and know what we're doing. So we're looking good here. So I'm going to tidy this up real fast and hopefully I'll get this video edited and up today and we'll continue in the next one, ideally putting the rabbit truck back together. I'm expecting the head gasket to ship out today. So fingers crossed it'll be here for the weekend. I don't think I'm going to make the show I wanted to with it. But we're going to get this truck together, and we're going to get it running. Isn't that right, Mr. Rabbit Truck? Yes, that is. We're going to get that sucker running. So, as always, thanks for tuning in. And a reminder, if your project doesn't have bonus parts like this or like that, is it even really a project? See you in the next video.